Hi guys, how are ya? It is now, I guess it's Thursday morning, right? I was expecting a big old snowstorm, but uh, it's delayed, so I'm just looking out there and it's kind of still melting, and I hate that melting part, you know? But anyway, I am here in my office trying to get some other things done, and <laughs> I had, you know, my YouTube playing, and then it started playing this other channel, you know, if you just have things going and blah, 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 and so this channel I've never heard before, and I just shared one of their videos a couple hours ago because I cannot stop listening to this channel. It's freaking hilarious. It is called Everything Go Lightly, and this person is just a comedic master. I mean, it's, it's that kind of, you know, Saturday Night Live humor that we all just crave, um, and so... I would like to do just a little fair use on um, their content from these last few minutes of this because I cannot stop laughing. I mean, honestly, go to this channel. Everything go lightly. It is just freaking hilarious. I, I, I'm so impressed by this creator. Um, so, okay. So this goes to the story that I've been talking about um, that Michelle that I want exposed because of the terrible things that she has done to United States veteran who has faced foreign enemies, foreign war, a uh, whole career in the military facing unthinkable things. And then he had to deal with the Michelle and the damage she's done to him. I, I, I don't, I, I can't, I can't, I'm so disgusted. I'm absolutely disgusted. Okay. So anyway, you know, I was concerned when she started going to talk to this guy and um, I told you in my last video kind of some things here. So anyway, the Michelle started on YouTube because she um, started calling in and she was like stalking Molly Golightly here. And um, Molly rejected her. Uh, Michelle tried to buddy up to Molly and um, paid for her membership, which included a like a a one on one phone call, maybe like once a month or whatever. So Michelle was like, "Okay, I want to talk to you twenty four. I want to talk to you twenty four seven, okay." So anyway, I didn't know that they um these two had talked about uh, Michelle a couple of weeks ago. I mean, obviously he's continued to uh, befriend um Michelle because she's infatuated with him. But these two are talking about her boobs. And it just goes on from there. It's it's pretty funny. So so um, sorry I didn't uh, ask first, Mister Everything Go Lightly. But this you just got so much, and I'm I, I I am so impressed. So please let me borrow this clip. I'm doing it under fair use. I will not steal it, but you'll 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 hear. I won't I won't. I'll add something in. Thank you, thank you in advance. So here we go. <laughs> Uh, uh, she, was to, she was talking a lot of nonsense about your uh whatever your new photo or, or not a new photo but the time you flashed have you ever seen michelle's uh michelle's whatchamacallit they are, yeah they're just <laughs> well, i mean not only does he have this filter on them so it's already funny the way that they look <laughs> <laughs> The look um uh uh whatchamacallit it's just they're like trying to ah. Okay, so here it goes. Disgusting. Have you ever seen him? She has this I series of has to... he says he says her boobs are disgusting. Ah. Disgusting tits? They are actually above her belt line. Unlike yours, Mooley. <laughs> Have you seen those photos that she sends out? The, the black and white is like a three photo set that she just sent to me. The same photos, like five she got years. a deluxe set from the Time Life Warner. <laughs> and, uh, and they're so cheesy, and they 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 do not look good. They don't look good. Like they're they don't. So I think the backstory on that is that, um, Michelle or Trashell, as they're calling her right now, um. I think she had uh, paid some poor fool to do a naked, nudie, bourgeois shoot of her as a gift for her 
poor ex-husband. Like I say, he's he's faced foreign enemies, and then he's had to see Michelle in a bourgeois. He married her. I don't know. Anyway. And so, yeah, so now she's, like, taking the, the pictures that she got, you know, years ago and apparently sending them to the man that she wants here, this this man right here. She wants him badly. You know, in that last clip, you saw how she's having the wet dreams about him. Um, so she's sending him these old uh, old nudies uh, of her that were intended for her husband. Mooley has some 1990s glamour shot, almost nude. Photos she used to make people pay nine dollars and ninety nine cents for. Maybe Mooley will take those to nineties con with her. <laughs> <laughs> Molly was talking about going to this nineties con thing. Um, <laughs> it's like nineties uh, kind of reality stars and stuff, and. <laughs> You've heard the term refund gap, like a big gap that'll be behind like a bad pair after like whatever, like her, whatever, her thing is like, it's crazy. Her, her like nipples are inside her armpits is what I'm trying to tell you. And <laughs> Mooley's point to the floor. They're literally looking at each of Mooley's big toes. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. He's talking about Michelle's. Oh God, what is it? When when you get implants and um, I think it's I think it's called capsular capsular contraction. I think is what they call it when um, <laughs> when your body essentially you know uh, rejects the um, implant. Um, Michelle, it seems like she has an eating disorder. She's very obsessed with. Um, eating well she eats a lot but she is obsessed with her weight and loves to call every other woman fat and whatnot so I think that you know she doesn't have a lot of body fat she's that kind of fat skinny they were talking about that you know where you're just kind of where you might have been you know in shape but then after you just lay around on a couch for the couple decades and smoke and drink and you know it, it's it's fat skinny so um I just can't imagine implants on her anyway, but um, he said the nipples are under her armpits from the, um, it, he's, I think he's referring to capsular contraction, but as you can hear, the commenter is commenting on Molly's and I'm just going to let that be. And then instead of sitting like have a normal kind of, look of you know, straight ahead. She's going to kill you for fucking <laughs> about her tits. You know that, right? She's going to come back. So what they does he say? Like they're, they don't like. Mooley has some 1990s glamour shot, almost nude, photos she used to make people pay nine dollars and ninety nine cents for. <laughs> Maybe Mooley will take those to 90s con with her. <laughs> you've, you've heard the term refund gap, like a big gap that'll be behind <laughs> like a bad pair after like whatever, like her whatever her thing is like is crazy. Her, her, like, nipples are inside her armpits, is what I'm trying to tell you. And Mooley's point to the floor. They're literally looking at each of Mooley's big toes. <laughs> they point, and then instead of sitting, like, have a normal kind of look, of, you know, straight ahead. She's going to kill you for fucking talking <laughs> about her tits. You know that, right? She's going to come back with a fucking machete and be like, fuck you! <laughs> You're talking about my fucking tits. Those were personal. That fucking Time Life collection was just for you, Andy. And you're talking to that fucking whore about my fucking tits. How dare you? You know what she did last time? She went upstairs and took the most intimidating, frightening nude photo I've ever seen and sent it to me. Oh, like this look. <laughs> Okay, so there's, I understand a lot of the inside jokes, but I don't understand this one. Um, so this must refer to something with um, this guy here. Um, because he's he's talking about how um, horrifying this 
nude picture is that Michelle sent him one night when they were talking. So she's sending full on nude. She's sending old nude. She's sending recent nude. She's sending everything and begging him to come out there and having wet dreams about him and everything. I mean, she is obsessed with this man. She was obsessed with Molly and that's why, you know, she's not gotten off YouTube. You know, I think she got her channel not too, too long after I got mine and, um, <laughs> just been you know terrorizing I think she's I think they said that she's at 10 channels now that she's had pulled and just makes a new one so she can sit there and talk to ski all day and, and she's gotta go and the ski's gonna be on live she's gonna go talk to him they're gonna go on live and get some super chats so I don't know because this creator puts in this picture um so I don't know what this is but uh he's talking about <laughs> Michelle sending him a nude The last time I made fun of her titties, she went and sent a, she called it a nudie. And boy, it was, a, it was frightening. It wasn't so much because the, the bare chest, but it was like the look in her face, like her eyes. She would look possessed. I don't know what, she didn't look happy, seductive, like sexy or anything. Like she, it was the mean, it was like a, like a prisoner, like mean mugging, the, like another prisoner. You're like me, you attract all the fucking psychos, don't you? <laughs> she was going to show me by taking me a fresh nudie. She's like, and then she's looking at me like this. Looks like a, she looks like a serial killer in the photo. It's like, what the fuck is going on? That is, that is fucking serious. Witchy woman. Put the crucifix down for fuck's sake. Oh my gosh. And yeah, we, we need that right there. For sure. Next time work. she sends you that, send her the picture of the crucifix and say, don't talk to me. Too bad. You don't instantly melt when you pick that up. <laughs> say yeah. wrong number. That's right. I well, think yeah. you two are going to get married. What would you do if you knocked her up? <laughs> what would you do if you knocked her up? Oh, <laughs> she's going there. She's going there. She's going there. She's going there because she's she knows that Michelle is obsessed with him. And, you know, and this was like two weeks ago or 11 days ago. And honestly, you know, it's like he plays with her all day long and and, you know, and he stops himself from raging on her and she stops herself from raging on him. You know, anybody else is fair game for each of them. And I don't know. I... If a what? Well, she's too old, right? She's grown. She can't have kids or whatever. That's what she'll tell you. But she'll trap you. How is it? Wow. Well, she'd have to meet me first, Molly. Well, you, you might have to choke another bitch out. Oof. Oh, I never choked the first one. Oh, no. There's rumors that you... Oh, shit. She went there oh, oh oh molly knows molly knows about this dude oh nap choke the woman out is that true I know. so you joke about it life roach no it's not those are <laughs> those are char so let me ask you a question you you respect the american system with like innocent until proven guilty right I mean, you know what? You can believe someone's guilty public opinion. Okay, now this is what I said earlier is because he does have some really, really um, bad things that are out there about him. And I wanted to give him the opportunity to speak on them, to say yes or no. But, you know, I, I was unable to access him. But, you know, Molly's Molly is a, a D-list celebrity so you know the two of them can talk but you know um so when i went further i i saw i saw the charges i saw and i mean there's there's a ton of them and there's there's something even worse i don't want to talk about it um i but she went there she went there at ooh. you could think they did it or whatever but if somebody goes to court and the prosecution dismisses the charges cost to state and you're exonerated did that person still be deserved deserve to be given like the same title as if they had actually been guilty or, or uh, been convicted or whatever. You see what I mean? So like, for instance, say somebody like, let's just call somebody named Billy. Say they said Billy. Is this guy truly, is this guy truly trying to talk me into this right now? <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you think? Okay. This, and this is where I'm saying, because 
anybody can get arrested for anything. Quite honestly, it can happen. You can be at the wrong place at the wrong time. You can be at the end of a fight that you didn't start. And I'm just saying I've seen a lot of things in my in my old ass years. And I like to see how things pan out from from an arrest, um, or how th- how things shake out, and and then ask the person, you know, because a lot of times they will just plead out to you know disorderly conduct or whatever, you know, was this something? Was this what? Was this whatever? But um, this is this is this is interesting that Molly knew his background, and these two, you know, they they've had this conversation going on for. So this this thing is, you know, an hour and six minutes. But um, this commenter or this creator is just brilliant and, you know, talks along with them. As you can see, their editing is on point and, the, and they've got that um, voice, you know, like uh, when we were all in, you know, middle school and we had the health class and it's that that fatherly voice, you know, I mean, this, like I say, this creator's freaking brilliant. Where have they been? You know, all my life. I, I just, ah, I, I love it. Cause I, I, I try to seek out humor. I, um, I, I love humor. I love to make people laugh. I love to laugh, but in today's world, it's just kind of hard to find places to go and laugh with people. And, and I hate talking on the phone. I despise talking on the phone. It's my pet peeve. So it's not like I'll, I'll you know, pick up the phone and laugh with somebody. You know, it's it's like, and I, I don't really leave my house. So, so finding other active humans to laugh with is something that doesn't happen that much out of my house. I mean, I laugh with my kids and my husband and stuff all the time. Especially, I laugh more because I think I'm hilarious. They don't think I'm as funny as I think I am. But anyway... Um, it's just great when you can just get together and just laugh. It's just, I think it's the best form of stress relief and, you know, and you don't have to go out and drink and, and what, you know, I, I'm like, you can just, if you can have something that you can just laugh with and, and you just catch that person's humor and you go back and forth and you build on that humor, it's just freaking, it's so rare and it's so wonderful. And I just, I miss that in today's world. People are so freaking uptight. We can't dare have anything like Saturday Night Live because it's not politically correct and somebody might get their fee-fees hurt. You're so stupid. It's like, you know, when I grew up, you know, I, I think I started watching Saturday Night Live when I was like four or five, you know, and um, my drunk hippie ass parents, you know, would be out doing whatever they were doing and I'd be sitting there watching TV, you know, watching Saturday Night Live. And I had the biggest crush on Steve Martin. You know, I would do the the King Tut. You know, I've already talked about this, you know. And and, and then I grew up like that, you know, and I, I would I would make all my friends watch Saturday Night Live with me at slumber parties. And we would act out the skits all week, you know, and have those just as little laughing points. And it, it was really like that until until our society got so uptight. And I mean, we're just, we're going backwards, like becoming just like Victorian in that, you know, you don't dare laugh. If you see somebody laugh in public, you give them the side eye, like WTF is wrong with you. You know, so weird, so weird. Like laughing is just not politically acceptable anymore. I just, I miss it. So like I say, I found this comedic gold and it's, oh, it's just building. But then knowing that these two know what they're doing and they know the backstory and how they're playing this little thing back and forth, trying to see what each of them knows about each other and about Michelle and whatnot. They're doing a very calculated dance on top of um, the the creator doing this wonderful commentary. It's just, oh, it's just beautiful. Mooley, this shouldn't be that hard, considering you set up one of your supporters for theft from a stripper in New Orleans, and supposedly you were exonerated from the charges of theft, right? What do I do about what? Are you innocent until proven guilty? Or in public opinion, the accusation's as bad as it gets. Like, they don't care if you're ever found guilty. Once you're accused, you're pretty much condemned out the gate. Bruh. That's what oh. Mooley has built her entire channel off e- of. Exactly. Like, exactly. And this is where it goes because you all know how I, I have a little bit different way of thinking. My background, you know, is 
in forensic psychology and it's my passion and uh, it's it's I I dissect things psychologically. I I look at things backwards. You know, I, I cannot drive past a car accident. I, I can't. I have to loop back around, go slow, look at it, you know, try and figure out what happened here, there. Um, it, it, you know, my husband can't stand it, you know, and, and uh, you know, I, he's, he's like, why can't we just go past it? I'm like, no, please. Can we turn around? Please, 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 please. Let me see this. Oh, let me see that. Oh, thank you. Oh, let me get this to you. Let me get this. Cause I've got to figure out even what happened there and whatnot. And then I'll be watching, you know, the state patrol to see, you know, um, what the report said and whatnot and, and how it came out. And, I, I mean, that's the, like my mind. I can't, I can't drive by like a car accident, like I say, and not deconstruct it. And that's the way that I am. And that's where some of these higher profile cases uh, don't make sense to me. Now, this is interesting because we know that, um, you, you know, this is this is where I, I, I have my channel a lot with when I'm on Watts Island is that I don't think that Christopher Watts is guilty of what he thinks he's guilty of as there is a place in our criminal justice system for an affirmative defense. I don't think that was explained to him. Okay. So even if he did what he says he did when he says that him and a demon or a demon took over him, when he did that in Wisconsin, which he had already taken a place, there was no reason for him to do it other than to make Tamburglar fuck right off. Um, but even if he said that he did it, there are extenuating circumstances, which I have outlined on my channel. Okay. I have taken the opposite side of the headlines, okay? So from what I know, Molly would think opposite of me. Molly teamed up with the ruse, from what I understand. And if she wouldn't have had that unfortunate snafu happen with getting um, arrested from the accusation of the stealing from a stripper, whatever happened, I thought that she was going to meet with uh, Frank Sr. So, I mean, I mean, there's definitely some things because, you know, I'm Team Watts. Um, the, so it's it's interesting as, as he is posing a question to her right now, which I don't, un, I don't know if so many people understand how loaded this question is. And I don't know if he knows her background in the way that she comes from things. And, you know, that's how a courtroom does. There's the, the, the two opposing sides. So having an opposing side is, is what happens. And I, again, I say, I don't think that people knew all of the backstory of what was going on with the Watts. And I think that a lot of people would, um, definitely feel different than they did as a lot of people now are admitting that you know they didn't know this they didn't know this now that they know this etc so this is interesting because he has an extensive criminal background i'm just going to say that um where he has convictions and i do believe it is alleged that he has pending charges um and so he's coming at it from that offender status She's coming from it where she comes very hard with the mainstream media because she has built her channel on um, getting views on YouTube by those big headlines. So this, this is really interesting. And these two are doing, it's a dance. These two are, are dancing back and forth to see which one is going to reveal what. And they're, they're, they're both teetering back and forth. Accusing people of things, using public opinion to create guilt and then profiting from that to mass. <laughs> well, right. Okay. Well, it depends on the circuit. It depends on what you're talking about. Well, I guess they, a lot of people thought OJ did it and he was found innocent. So I can't really, I guess it's not a good argument. He was not it. found innocent. Okay. Now, there's a big difference between being found innocent and being found not guilty. So his 
analogy, his argument is flawed. Um, OJ was not found guilty, being that they could not prove beyond a reasonable doubt that he had unalived Ron Goldman and um, his wife's name just absolutely slipped my head. And that's from COVID brain. And, um, oh, God, it's sorry. So it's just COVID brain when I try to think about too many things and then I lose the name. So um, his Nicole. Nicole Brown Simpson. Okay. So in a criminal court, he was not convicted. He was not found guilty as they could not prove beyond a reasonable doubt that he alone did this. Now in a civil court, he was found culpable. He was found responsible in a civil court. So very similar to the Watts where they essentially put forth a civil suit in the Rusics have the, what their $6 million against Christopher Watts. Although it didn't go to a civil trial, it went to a civil judgment and Christopher Watts will not fight. He didn't fight his wife when she emasculated, defeated, otherwise abused and I, I I can't. I won't go down that right now. So Christopher Watts forfeited his right to a trial. Okay? He, he forfeited all of his rights as an American citizen, as we know. Now, that is not the end-all, be-all, and we know that. I don't know that he knows that. He could ultimately do the 35C when he wants to stand up on his feet and fight like a big boy. But... Why he won't is also a bigger question. How it went from what he said happened in that first interview to the charges that he got and was put in prison for life. And it also sounds like they told him that they were going to put him in a prison close to his parents. And it turned out to be closer to his parents, which Wisconsin is not near North Carolina. Okay, so he thought that by pleading taking responsibility is what he said that he'd be able to be close to his parents, not in Colorado alone. Then he also says he didn't know he was going to be in prison forever. So the terms of his plea agreement were not fully explained. This is interesting because Molly did not go to those types of places where I go on my channel. Um, and he does not know the backstory of things as I, as I see it. And, and he should watch some of the OJ documentaries to, to, to see how, how that delineates between using that argument. A lot of people will use that argument as a, as a layman's or, you know, it's, it, it's a flawed argument anyway. That motherfucker's guilty. <laughs> well, he wrote a book about it after the fact. He can, he can take that book and shove it right up his asshole. He's <laughs> fucking guilty. They gave him a lot of time on that robbery, though. They kind of got him back. Okay. I just, sorry, I didn't know that this was going to be popping in there. I thought it was just going to be about Michelle doing gross nudes around the corner to to mortify this young man. Um <laughs> I didn't know it's going to go into this. Sorry. Um, Cause then, you know, you know me, I got, I got to start talking about that. Um, his book, if I did it was an interesting, um, take on really saying nothing. And yeah, he, he really did get the shaft because the way that things ended up when Oh, and okay, so he ended up getting set up to essentially steal his own belongings, his belongings that had been stolen, hawked, whatever, were going to be at a certain place. Somebody set him up, recorded and whatnot, to go and steal it back. I believe he had a handgun. And in Vegas, essentially, if you even if you steal a piece of gum under any um, 
place with a roof in Vegas. It's 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 a felony. So that's something like that because they made it so that, you know, because there's so many casinos, everything has to be very, very strict about the rules that happen there. So um, he was essentially trying to steal his own things back that had been lost to him. Okay. So he ended up getting quite the sentence and put in um, Las Vegas jail and then ultimately serving his time in prison in Vegas. And it's the, the jails in Las Vegas are, um, absolutely terrible. There's absolutely terrible and cruel things that go on behind bars there. Um, unspeakable it, just the way that, uh, inmates are treated. It's, there's a lot of people that don't deserve the way that they're treated in Vegas jail. That's what I'm going to say. I'm just going to say, but OJ did because it's kind of funny because that's, it's kind of one of the worst as far as a human treatment. It's, it's one of the worst from what I hear, um, in that corrections kind of realm. Um, and from living in Vegas, some of the stories I've heard are really bad, but, um, I heard an interview recently with OJ and he ultimately was by a court order given those things back. So he went to prison for trying to steal them back. And now he has those in his possession ruled by a court. So it's a long, long and convoluted story with OJ. And I don't know if he did it then. I don't know if he did it alone. I mean, the timing is, is suspect just like any of these things I, I guess because we don't really see somebody on tape actually committing these murders so it's always shocking to think you know wow did this all happen in that you know the Idaho thing four able-bodied young adults in the prime of their life being murdered by one individual with one knife in under 17 minutes it's just crazy but it's because we don't see it we we don't uh, it's just not something that you see on film um you, you don't see it you don't have anything to compare it to and be like oh gosh well the last time that you know it, it, so it's it's shocking uh, so maybe it could have happened with the oj i mean he, i don't know if he had somebody else do it i don't know you got a karma or what have you however you want to look at it i think you got like somebody in your chat just call me a lefty i'm definitely <laughs> I'm not a lefty. I'm, I'm actually a libertarian. A Trump supporting libertarian. <laughs> oh, that's nice. I don't, I've never voted, but uh, I do like to uh, stay informed. <laughs> Look at this guilty until you are found innocent. That's no, that that's how I live my life on YouTube. I'm guilty of everything. I have to that's prove how I'm innocent. And you've still never proven yourself innocent. Oh. That's how I am on, on YouTube. They 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 put me guilty of everything, and then I have to prove myself. And I'm like, what kind of shit is this? That's well, maybe and maybe this this YouTube um, lesson that she's been through will help her to be put in those positions where you are accused of things, and the whole story isn't isn't. Um, factored in you know maybe this this is good for her from the initial stance that she took with the watts maybe if she knew the whole thing maybe she wouldn't have taken it so i don't know i just thought that you know with with my watts islanding and how i've been taking a little uh vacation from my watts uh watts work this week um thought you guys would like to hear this and see this one and didn't mean for it to turn into something else but it did and that's the way it goes on my channel you know how it goes um so let me see what I got right here. That's my on YouTube. Thanks for stopping by for this Saturday's featured presentation of When Andy Met Mooley. And <laughs> Thank you, creator of everything Go Lightly. I have enjoyed this evening and I will continue to share your work on my channel. And thank you for letting me um, borrow that little thing that I thought was just going to be just about the nudie, but it turned into something else. So thank you. And thank you so much uh, to my, my listeners as always. Um, I've got some other good things cooking up for you. You know, a, a good, a good old um, Tabitha Jane Watts rant is, is in the makes and I need to do another live soon too. So um, going into the weekend, we've hit Thursday now, so we're making it. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye.